My name is Chet Swan. Um, I am I'm a, I'm a mechanical engineer, and um, my invention was a, um, a basically a, a pressure vessel that we used in a um, in a water rocket, which set a new world record for the altitude of a water, water rocket. Um, and yeah, the, the invention was basically um, combining a carbon fiber shell or any any composite shell really, but we used carbon fiber and then a flexible, um, a flexible rubber liner to, to seal the vessel. Um, and that was the, the essence of, of my invention. A pressure vessel is, is any container that, that holds pressure. Um, like a really, simple pre a really simple pressure vessel would be a Coke bottle. Um, you know, Coke bottles, it's, it's, it's something where um, the container is put under pressure by the fluid that's inside it. For one, the, the ease of manufacture. Um, so we, we designed a composite pressure vessel, which is, is normally a very expensive thing to manufacture, as well as um, a very time-consuming and um, I guess a, it, it needs a lot of infrastructure to do something like that. Um, so. Our invention was basically sort of slightly changing, tweaking the design of one in order to make it um, in order to make it a lot easier to make um, and and also a lot a lot cheaper to make. Um, so the the um, innovation was really around using what we had around us to to come up with a, a simplified design in terms of both um, the construction and um, and machinability. Two questions for you before that. Um, so you have to describe the invention to a 10-year-old. Could you do that? Uh, so yeah. basically just in layman's terms. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so can you tell us about the world record as well? That you, yeah. um, the, the world record attempt um, started all the way back in about midway through 2013 um, where um, we were, myself and um, a fellow student at the time, Donovan Changfoot, um, we were both being supervised on our final year projects by um, Professor Milan. And um, uh, we both ended up doing a, a, water, or a project to do with a water rocket. Um, and Donovan went the more um, theoretical route, so he did a um, CFD modeling or computer, he did a computational fluid dynamics model of the rocket um, to work out how high it would go. And then I focused more on the, on the design side. Um, and then about halfway through the year, halfway through, thousand, through 2013, um, we decided to actually merge our projects together. We were, we were both designing and working on the same rocket. I was doing more the, um, the actual design of the rocket and he was doing more the, um, the analysis of the rocket. Um, and so we, we teamed together and, and decided to go for a world record, um, which, we, which we hoped to, to get that year. Um, and anyway, at the end of 2013, we had one successful launch, which we managed to get the rocket to an unknown altitude, but it was, it was enough to sort of spur us on and, and think, you know, actually we, we can get the record. Um, and so we came back in early 2014 um, and um, Prof Milan asked if we could you know, come back to UCT and sort of give it one more month and see if we can actually get the record officially. And um, that one more month turned into almost two years of, um, 
of us sort of plugging away at, at the rocket and you know coming coming against all kinds of problems that we didn't see um, in the beginning and eventually refining it and refining it and having many um, you know many successes many failures and um, you know almost to the point where we were very ready just to just to give it all up and um, and you know say you know say we've we've had a go at it and that's that. Yeah, we decided to do one last attempt, which was um, midway through last year, 2015. And um, yeah, so we, we did one, one last test, um, and, um, or one last attempt at actually building the final rocket. And, um, and you know, everything on that, on that build had to be absolutely perfect, because the problems in the, in the previous launches were um, you know, just such such small differences in the rocket design or manufacture make such a big difference when when we're pushing the limits like we were. And um, yeah, so midway to, through 2015, we um, we did a final launch and managed to get the record. And yeah, it was all such a big relief for all of us, um, knowing that um, you know all that hard work that we put into actually paid off. And um, yeah, and now we have the record and. Who knows, maybe we'll do another one soon. The original um, record, well not the original, but the, the previous record was set in, I think, 2007. Um, and that reached an altitude of 623 meters. Um, and our rocket um, reached an average altitude. So it's average because um, you have to launch basically two flights within two hours. Um, and yeah, so our average altitude was 835. Um, so we, we increased the record by about another 30%. Uh, so can you tell us what inspired or motivated you to create this invention? Um, the inspiration behind the invention, I guess, was all driven by um, I guess doing everything on, on a tight budget and finding solutions that you know that we could make work. Obviously, we didn't have um, we didn't have the facilities to, to produce like uh, um, a normal type of pressure vessel. Um, normally, you know, a pressure vessel that we that would be used in something like um, one of these rockets. If you did it commercially, you know, it would be done in a huge factory and it would it would. It's all specialist equipment, and to do something like that would would cost us, I don't know, you know, hundreds of thousands of rands to get a pressure vessel like that manufactured. Um, and so, the the thing driving our innovation was was purely just, um, you know, what we what was available to us and the costs involved with it. So it drove us to find simpler and simpler solutions to the same problem, and eventually ending up in our um, in our pressure vessel, which which um, actually works amazingly well. So, can you take us through some of the challenges that you faced in the inventing process? And the challenges that I faced were, um, I guess, for me as a problem solver. Um, it's hard to say because I I thrive off challenges. So for me, a challenge is, is something that, that I really enjoy. It's something that, um, that excites me when there's a, a challenge or um, a problem to be solved. Um, I, yeah, it makes me really excited to, to find a solution. Um, so I can't, think of a, I can't think of a challenge that we face other, other than, you know, just the, um, I guess, the... Um, the pursuit of always simplifying the design and trying to um, iterate it and iterate it and iterate it to simplify it, make it more robust. Um, and essentially that's, that's what our project was about. Um, so what do you anticipate looking to the future with regards to this invention? Um, In the future, um, there are um, some potential 
um, commercial interests um, because so our, our pressure vessel is, is basically it's just a really long thin pressure vessel um, and it's super light and it can hold high pressure um, so there is potential commercial um, interest from uh, the aerospace industry um, it's suited to be um, you know in in things like aircraft and, and that sort of thing where a normal pressure vessel is sort of a um, you know a short fat tank um, whereas ours is much suited um, to be a you know long thin pressure vessel and sometimes just spatially um, that can fit better into certain designs of aircraft or or rockets or whatever it may be um, and it's also um, you know it's just a it's just a really lightweight um, pressure vessel. So looking back is there anything you do differently? Um, no. <laughs> Is creativity. Um, I I love um, just design in general, um, not just the the theoretical side, but um, also the the cosmetic side. Um, and I really I really like that because the you know I, I can sort of work sort of both parts of my brain. It's not just the the theory, but it's also the um, the creative side and how things look. Not to give up. Um, I know in, in this project we had, you know, we thought it was going to take about a month to to complete the project after you know after we'd finished our university degrees, and, um, and instead of taking a month, it took us two years. And in that two years, we had many many failures, probably a lot more failures than we did success. Um, and but we still just kept persevering, kept persevering, and. I mean, all all of us involved in the project um, were, you know, very seriously thinking of of quitting, um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know what sort of um, spurred us on to to continue, um, but we did continue, and um, I can say um, that for most of the project, you know, I wanted to not be doing the project. It was only in the last, I don't know, three or four months of the project that I thought. Okay, like no, we we can actually do this. Like let's let's do this, um, and so for the rest of that of that time, you know, about more than eighteen months, I was pretty much just wanting to give up. But um, but I was always um, I just always kept persevering through, and um, we ended up with a world record. So it was definitely worth it. Mm -hmm.